Chapter 5 Ananda put his palms together, bowed and said to the Buddha, Having heard the Buddha's unbounded, greatly compassionate, pure, everlasting, true and actual expression of Dharma, I still have not understood the sequence for releasing the knots such that when the six are untied, the one is gone also. I only hope you will be compassionate and once again take pity on this assembly and on those of the future by bestowing the sounds of Dharma on us and wash and rise away our heavy defilements. Then upon the lion's throne the first common straightened his nirvana robes, arranged his samgati, took hold of the table made of the seven gems reached out onto, onto the table with his hand and picked up a flowered cloth given him by the Suyama god. Then, as the assembly watched, he tied it into a knot and showed it to Ananda, asking, What is this called? Ananda and the great assembly answered together, It's called a knot. Then the first common tied another knot in the cloth of layered flowers and asked Ananda again, What is this called? Ananda and the great assembly once again answered together, It too is called a knot. He continued in this pattern until he had tied six knots in the cloth of layered flowers. As he made each knot, he held it up to Ananda and asked, What is this called? And each time, Ananda and the Great Assembly answered the Buddha in the same way. It is called a knot. The Buddha said to Ananda, When I first tied the cloth, you called it a knot. Since the cloth of layered flowers is basically a string or strip, how can you call the second and third ties knots as well? Ananda said to the Buddha, World honored one, this cloth of woven layered flowers is just one piece, but as I consider it, when the first common makes one tie, it is called a knot. If he were to make a hundred ties, they would be called a hundred knots. How much the more so with this cloth, which has exactly six knots, not seven or five. Why does the first common allow me to call only the first tie a knot and not the second or third ties? The Buddha told Ananda, You know that this precious cloth of flowers is basically one strip. But when I made six ties in it, you said it had six knots. As you carefully consider this, you will see that the substance of the cloth is the same. It is the knots that make the difference. What do you think? The first knot I tied was called number one, continuing until I come to the sixth knot, and as I now tie it, is it also number one? No, won't honored one. If there are six knots, the sixth knot can never be called number one. In all my lives of learning, with all my understanding, how could I now confuse the names of six knots? The Buddha said, so it is. The six knots are not the same. Consider their origin. They are created from the one cloth. To confuse their order will not do. Your six sense organs are also like this. In the midst or ultimate sameness, conclusive differences arise. The Buddha said to Ananda, you certainly dislike these six knots and would like there to be just one cloth. But how can that be done? Ananda said, As long as these knots remain, there will be grounds for argument about what is and what is not. Their very existence will lead to such distinctions as this knot not being that knot and that knot not being this one. But if for on this day the first come on and ties them all so that no knots remain, then there will be no this and no that. There will not even be something called one. How much the less can there be six? The Buddha said, when the six are untied, 
the one is gone is the same meaning because from beginningless time your mind and nature have been made wide and rebellious you have produced false knowledge and views this falseness continues to arise without respite and the wearisomeness of these views brings about objective dust it is just like strange flowers appearing and your eyes grow weary of staring they arise at random without any cause within the tranquil essential brightness everything in the world the mountains the rivers and the great earth as well as birth death and nirvana is all just a strange weariness the upside down appearance of flowers ananda said this wearisome uh, weariness is the same as the nose. How do we untie them? The first common took hold of the knotted cloth and pulled on its left end and asked Ananda, Is this the way to untie it? No wound on it one. Then with his hand, he pulled on the right end and again asked Ananda, Is this the way to untie it? No wound on it one. The Buddha said to Ananda, Now I have pulled it to the left and right with my hand and still have not been able to undo them. What method do you propose to untying them? For untying them, Ananda said to the Buddha, Wound on it one, you must untie the knots from their center. Then they will come undone. The Buddha said to Ananda, so it is, so it is. If you want to get them undone, you have to untie them from the center. Ananda, the Buddha Dharma I explained arises from causes and conditions, but that is not to grasp at the mixing and uniting of cause appearances in the world. The first come one understands the own worldly and world transcending dramas and knows their fundamental causes and what conditions bring them into being. This is so to the extent that I know how many drops of rain fall in as many walls away from here as there are dust most in the Ganges. The same is true for all the things you can see. Why the pine is straight, why the brambles are twisted, why the goose is white, why the crow is black. I understand the reasons. Therefore, Ananda, you can select whichever one of the six sense organs you wish. If the knots of the sense organs are removed, then the defiling appearances disappear of themselves. All falseness ceases to be. If that is not the truth, what do you expect in addition to it? Ananda, I now ask you, can the six knots in the cloth of layered flowers be untied simultaneously and released all at once? No, won't on earth one. The knots were originally made one at a time. Now they must untie one at a time. The substance of the six knots is the same, but they were not made simultaneously. And so now, when it is time to release them, how can they be untied simultaneously? The Buddha said, Releasing the six sense organs is the same way. When the sense organ begins to be released, one realizes the emptiness of pupil first. When the nature of that emptiness is fully understood, then one is released from dharmas. Once one is freed from dharmas, neither kind of emptiness will arise. This is called the patience with non-production attained by the Bodhisattvas by means of Samadhi. Upon receiving the Buddha's instruction, Ananda and the Great Assembly gained wisdom and awareness that was perfectly penetrating and free of doubt and delusion. All at the same time, they placed their palms together, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and he said to the Buddha, Today our bodies and minds are even mind, and we are happily free from obstruction. We have understood the meaning of the ending of the six and the one, 
Still, we have not yet gone through to fundamental perfect penetration. Warned on it one, we who have floated and floundered our way through end after end, homeless and orphaned, had no idea. We never imagined that we could meet with the Buddha in such a close relationship. We are like lost infants who have suddenly found their compassionate mother. Because of this, we accomplished the way in this assembly, yet the secret words which we received are the same as our basic enlightenment, and so it is the same as if we hadn't even heard them. We only wish the greatly compassionate one will bestow upon us the profound secret as the thus commands final instruction. After saying this, he prostrated himself with him due and held himself ready for the secret opportunity as he awaited the Buddha's hidden transmission. Then the wound honored one told all those in the assembly who were great bodhisattvas and great arhats they are flows extinguished. All of your bodhisattvas and arhats who are born from within my dharma and have attained the stage beyond learning, I now ask you, when you first brought forth your resolve and became enlightened to the eighteen realms, which one of these brought perfect penetration? Through which expedient did you enter Samadhi? Kawandinya, with the others of the five bishops, arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, When I was in the deer park and the pheasant garden, I observed the thirst come on immediately after his accomplishment of the way. Upon hearing the Buddha's voice, I understood the four truths. The Buddha asks us bishops to speak. I was the first to understand, and the first common certified me and named me Anyatta. His wonderful sound was both secret and all pervasive. It was through sound that I became an Ahat. The Buddha asks about the perfect penetration. As I have been certified to it, sound is the superior means. Upanishad arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I also saw the Buddha when he first accomplished the way. I learned to contemplate the appearance of impurity until I grew to loathe it and came to understand that the nature of all form is unclean. Bare bones and subtle dust all return to emptiness and so both emptiness and form are done away with it. With this realization, I accomplished the path beyond learning. The first common certified me and named me Upanishad. The object of form came to an end, and wonderful form was both secret and all pervasive. Thus, it was through the appearance of form that I became an Ahad. The Buddha asked about perfect penetration, as I have been certified to it. Form is the superior means. The pure youth, adorned with fragrance, arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I heard the first common teach me to contemplate attentively all conditioned appearances. After I heard the Buddha's instruction, I sat in repose in the quiet and a pure of a pure dwelling. When I saw the bishop's light sinking in sense, the fragrant scent quietly entered my nostrils. I contemplated this fragrance. It did not come from the wood, it did not come from emptiness, it did not come from the smoke, and it did not come from the fire. There was no place it came from and no place it went to. Because of this, my discriminating mind was dispelled, and uh, I attained the absence of our flows. The first Kawan certified me and called me adorned with fragrance. Defiling sand suddenly vanished, and wonderful fragrance was both secret and all pervasive. It was through the adornment of fragrance that I became an Ahad. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. As I have been satisfied to it, 
the adornment of fragrance is the superior means. The two Dharma princes, physician king and superior physician, and 500 Brahma gods in the assembly arose from their seats, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, From beginning this compass until now, we have been good doctors for the world. In our mouths, we have tasted many herbs, wood, metals, and stones of the Saha world. A hundred and eight thousand flavors. We know in detail the bitter, sour, salty, bland, sweet, and pungent flavors and the like in all their combinations and inherent changes. We have a thorough knowledge of whether they be calming or warming, poisonous or non-poisonous. While serving the first common, we came to know that the nature of flavors is not empty and not existent nor is it the body or mind, nor is it apart from body and mind. We became enlightened by discriminating among flavors. The first common sealed and certified us brothers and named us as Bodhisattvas Physician, King and Superior Physician. Now in the assembly we are Dharma princes who have ascended to the Bodhisattva level because we became enlightened by means of flavors. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. As we have been satisfied to it, the cause of flavors is the superior means. Bhadrapala and 16 awakened lords who were his uh, companions arose from his, their seats and bowed at the Buddha's feet and said to the Buddha, we first heard the Dharma and left the home life under king of awesome South Buddha. Once, when it was time for the Sangha to bath, I followed the custom and entered the bathhouse. Suddenly, I awakened to the fact that water does not wash away the dust, nor does it cleanse the body. Does it cleanse the body? At that point, between the two, I became peaceful and I attained the state of there being nothing at all. To this day, I have never forgotten that past experience. Having left home with the Buddha, I have gone beyond learning. That Buddha named me Bradapala. Bhadrapala. Wonderful touch was revealed and I accomplished the position of the Buddha's disciple. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration as I have been certified to eat, touch is a superior means. Mahakashyapa, purple golden light Vishuni, and others arose from their seats, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, In a past karma in this region, I drew near to the Buddha named Sun Moon Lamb, who was then in the world. I heard drama from him and cultivated and studied with him. After that Buddha's extinction, I made offerings to his sharira and lit lamps to continue his light. Purple golden light gilded the Buddha's image. From that time on, in life after life, my body has always been perfect and has shone with the purple golden light. The Bishuni purple golden light and others make up my retinue and we all brought forth the resolve for Bodhi at the same time. I contemplated that the world's six sense objects change and decay, they are but empty stillness. Based on this, I cultivated extinction. Now my body and mind can pass through hundreds of thousands of compass as though they were a finger, finger snap. Based on the emptiness of dharmas, I accomplished a hardship. The world honored one says that I am foremost in Dutta practices. Wonderful dharma brought me awakening and understanding, and I extinguished all our flows. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. As I have been certified to it, dharmas are the super real means. Aniruddha arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, 
When I first left home, I was fond of sleeping all the time. The first common scolded me and said I was no better than an animal. Then I heard the Buddha scolding. I wept and upbraided myself. For seven days I did not sleep and I lost the sight of both my eyes. The wound on it one touched me, the, the Vara Samadhi of the delightful scene which illumines and is bright. Although I had no eyes, I could contemplate the ten directions with true and penetrating clarity, just as if I were looking at a piece of fruit in the palm of my hand. The first common certified me as having attained a hardship. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration as I have been certified to it. Returning the seeing back to its source is the foremost method. Shudra Panthaka arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I am deficient in the ability to memorize and do not have much innate intelligence. When I first met the Buddha, I heard the Dharma and left the home life. But when I tried to remember one line of a verse by the first come one, I went through a hundred days remembering the first part and forgetting the last or remembering the last and forgetting the first. The Buddha took pity on my stupidity and taught me to relax and regulate my breath. I contemplated my breath thoroughly to the subtle point in which a rising, dwelling change and extinction happen in every shana. My mind suddenly attained vast non-obstruction until my outflows were extinguished and I accomplished a hardship. Beneath the Buddha seat, I was sealed and certified as being beyond learning. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration as I have been certified to it. Turning the breath back to emptiness is the foremost method.